Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to import, cut, and splice your drone video, or any video, with CyberLink PowerDirector 16. In the previous episode, I gave you a tour of the Edit tab in PowerDirector 16. If you haven't watched that, please click the link in the upper right corner of this video. You will get the most out of these first five tutorials if you watch them in order. If you've seen that, we're ready to move on to Episode 2, Importing and Cutting Media. Let's open the project we started in the first episode. Here's our project right where we left things at the end of Episode 1. Let's start the process by getting rid of the sample media in the media room, then importing some video clips of our own. Like I said in episode 1, the program puts these sample clips into the library by default. If you click on the first clip, hold your shift key, and click on the last clip, you select all the clips. Now hit delete to get rid of the samples. You don't want these cluttering up your media room anyway. We didn't actually delete those source files from my hard drive, by the way. All we did was remove them from this project. Now let's import our own videos. Click on the Import Media button, choose Import Media Files, navigate to the folder where the media is stored, select the file, and hit Open. Now you see a video clip has been added to your media room. If this is a big file, it may take a few moments for the thumbnail to appear. You can import several media files at once. Click the Import Media button, navigate to the folder where the media is stored, click the first media clip you want to add, then hold your control key down and click on each additional clip you want to bring in. When they're all selected, let go of the control key and hit open. You can now see all the media clips have been brought in. Our next step is to add a media clip to the timeline. If you're not sure which clip you want, click on one and view it in your preview window. Not the right one? Click on another and preview it. So let's say this is the first clip I want to import. I click and hold on the clip and then drag it down to the top row of my timeline, then let go of the mouse button to drop the clip. Now you see the clip on the timeline. If the clip was longer, it would stretch out over a longer span on the timeline because the timeline shows you the duration of each clip you add, as indicated by the ascending numbers above the top row, called the timeline ruler. Now let's bring another clip to the timeline. Again, click and hold on the clip in the media library, then drag it down to the timeline. I'm going to put it at the end of the first clip. See this line and arrow here? This is your timeline slider. It allows you to pick an exact spot on your timeline. Let's click and drag the slider to near the end of the first clip, then hit play in the preview. See, the video plays smoothly and jumps from the first clip right into the next. Notice something. The first video clip has sound. Row 1 is actually split into two rows, one for the visible part of your video and one for the audio. For the video part of your clip, you see little thumbnails, and beneath that you see a waveform showing there is audio. The next clip has no sound. It was taken by a unique drone, and this is how unique and DJI video looks. It has an audio track, but the track is a flat line. Let's zoom in on our first two clips so we can work with them more easily. Hold the cursor over the timeline ruler, and your cursor changes to a blue clock face with arrows pointing forward and backwards. If you click and drag to the right, you will zoom in on the timeline. See how the clips appear to get bigger? If you click and then drag to the left, you zoom out on the timeline. I'll zoom in so we can work on these clips. 
As I said before, if you put things in separate rows, you can overlap them, in which case both will be playing at the same time. Let me show you. Let's take this second video clip and drag it down to the row labeled 2 and drop it. Now if we slide it over to the left, both video clips are spanning the same segment of the timeline. If we click play on the preview, we only see the second clip. That's because it's covering up the first clip. But listen, we can still hear the audio from the first clip, right? That's how we know both clips are playing simultaneously. Now why would we stack two videos like this? Well, like I said before, you can stack text and video together so you have titling appearing over the video. In this case, with two videos stacked up, later on we might decide to shrink this second video clip to where it only fills a quarter of the screen. Then you'd see the first video filling the entire background of the screen, and the second clip playing on top of it in the corner. This is how you create picture-in-picture, -picture, and you can do it with several videos, not just two. I use picture-in-picture -picture frequently when I do flight tutorials, and this is how I can show one view of the drone flying, with an inset close-up of my transmitter, and even another inset picture of the view from the drone. Picture-in-picture -picture goes beyond what belongs in an introductory video, so I'm not going to show how to do that here. If you want a tutorial on creating picture-in-picture, -picture, post in the comments below. If I create a video on picture-in-picture -picture later on, I'll put a link to it in the upper right corner of this video. If I did that, you can see that link now. For now, let's take this video clip on row 2 and drag it up to the end of the first clip on the top row. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to cut down a clip so you only keep the parts you want to use. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to grab another video clip from the library and drop it on a separate row on my timeline. I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, we're ready to cut. There are a few different ways to cut a video clip. I'm going to show you the two easiest ways to do it. The easiest way to cut the start or end of a clip is to click and drag. Click on the clip you want to edit to select it. You know it is selected because it's highlighted in blue. If you hold the cursor over the selected clip, the cursor turns into a hand. If you click and hold the clip with this hand, you can then slide the clip forward and back. However, if you hold the cursor over the end of the clip you selected, the cursor changes from the hand to a blue film strip with arrows pointing forward and back. If you then click and drag into the clip with this icon showing, you can see that it is eliminating that portion of the clip. Click and drag from the beginning to where you want to start. Let go, and your cut is done. Same from the end. Click and drag in from the end, and you're trimming off the end of the clip. Trim off too much, mouse over the end of the clip, then click and hold and drag out. The portion of the clip you trimmed off will be restored. You can go all the way to the end of the original clip, and then you can't drag anymore. This is the easy way to remove unneeded pieces at the start or finish of a media clip. It doesn't work for cutting out pieces from the middle of the clip, however. To do that, you can use this icon here, two vertical lines with arrows pointing in both directions. This is the split icon. Click on your video clip to make sure it's selected, then scrub through the preview window to find the point where you want to split the clip. Do you notice how the timeline slider moves as you scrub through the preview? The two arrows move in synchronization no matter which one you're actually manipulating. So let's say I want to make my first cut starting right here. I hit the split button and you can see on the timeline that the one video clip has been split into two pieces. The second piece remains selected. Let's scrub a little ways forward. 
Now hit the split icon again and you're split into three pieces. You can go through your clip and cut it into as many pieces as you'd like. I'll stick with three pieces for this example. Now that we've broken the video clip into segments, we can work with each segment independently. I'm going to get rid of the middle segment and just keep the first and third. I click on the middle segment to select it, and then I hit the trash can icon or just hit delete on my keyboard. Three options appear. If I choose remove and leave gap, the middle segment goes away and the space where that segment used to be is now empty. The other segments stay right where they were and there is a gap between the two. Let me undo that change by choosing the edit menu and selecting undo. I could also accomplish this by holding the control button and hitting the letter Z. Now the middle segment is back and I'll show you what happens with the second delete option. Click the middle segment to select it. If I now hit the trash can and choose remove and fill gap, the second segment goes away and the third segment now slides over to fill in the gap. See this clip I added a minute ago to the second row? When I deleted the second segment, the third segment moved over to fill the gap. But the video clip on the next row did not move over, so there is now a gap after the third segment but before this clip on another row. This brings us to our third choice for deleting. Let me undo that delete and I'll show you. Now the second segment has been returned. I click on the second segment to select it and hit the trash can. Now I choose Remove, Fill Gap, and Move All Clips. Now you can see the third segment has moved over to fill in the gap, and the video clip on the second row has also moved over. See? No new gap between the third segment and the next video clip on the next row. This is a handy feature. If you want to leave a gap to put something else in this spot, you tell it to leave the gap. If you don't want to move things on other rows, pick the second choice. If you want everything to slide over, pick the third choice. I'll show you one more thing about the split icon, but to explain it I'm going to slide this clip over so it's running at the same time as the clip above it on the timeline. Now, if I want to split the top clip, I click on it and then I hit split. The top clip is split, but the bottom clip isn't. Let me undo that. If I want to split the bottom clip, I click on that clip to select it, then hit split. Note that the bottom clip is split, but the top clip is intact. Let's undo that. What if I wanted to split both clips at the same time? To do that, I click anywhere on the timeline where no clips are located to deselect everything. I position the timeline slider where I want to split and hit the split icon. As you can see, both the top and bottom video clips are split at the same place. I don't need that last split, so let's undo that. You have another tool to trim and cut your media, and that's the scissors icon. I'm going to leave that to another episode. The first two ways I showed you will meet your needs as you start out. If you're interested in the scissors tool and more detail on cutting and splicing video clips, make a comment below and I'll do another tutorial just on that. If I do that tutorial, I'll put a link to it in the upper right corner of this video. If I did that, you'll see the link now. I'm going to hit Control S to save my masterpiece project so it's ready for the next episode. This concludes Episode 2 of Editing with PowerDirector 16. In the next video, I'll show you how to add transitions to your video in PowerDirector. Thanks for watching. Remember, sharing is caring. If you would share this video on social media, I would really appreciate your help. On screen you'll find a link to the complete playlist of PowerDirector 16 video editing tutorials, so please check them out. If you want more tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Before you go, be sure to hit the like button, also subscribe to this channel so you know when more videos are released. Next video coming soon.